Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to water, the chemical structure of water, the polar nature of water, hydrogen bonding in water, and then we'll finish with a summary. So water is a really important molecule for all of life, and we need to discuss why this is. It's a major component of all of the different parts of the cells, and it has important roles in all of our processes. So for example, if we look at an animal cell, and if we also look at a plant cell, we can see that both cells contain a cytoplasm, which is a gel-like substance containing most of the reactants and soluble substances in the cell. And in order to function as a soluble medium, it has to contain water. We also see water contained in the spaces of the different organelles like the Golgi, chloroplasts, the mitochondria, and the nucleus too. So various organelles contain water too. It's important for making up our structure. Water already has a role in particular types of reactions. It has a role in synthesizing and breaking down biological molecules from monomers to polymers or backwards. And this is done in condensation and hydrolysis reactions. So just as a recap of that, here we have two monomers. And when they come together, they form a dimer, or in this case, we'll summarize as a polymer. And in forming a polymer from monomers, we have condensation reactions. And in forming the polymer, we are removing these two groups to make a water molecule, which then leaves. If we were to go backwards and break a polymer down into its monomers, this is known as hydrolysis. And this requires the addition of water in forming these groups again and separating that bond out. So water is already considered an important use in building up molecules, for example, building new cells or building bones or anything like that. And it's also used in breaking down things like molecules we've digested, for example. And also thinking about photosynthesis, which is carried out in plants, it's a key reactant used in the reaction. The equation for photosynthesis is the combining of carbon dioxide with water to produce glucose and the waste product of oxygen. So because it's used in an important reaction, which is useful, we can call it a metabolite. Water has lots of other roles in different reactions of life. And this is due to its unique properties. So as a molecule, it has a particular set of unique features which occur due to its structure of atoms. And if we summarize what H2O is, from the formula you can gather that it is two hydrogen atoms bounded to one oxygen atom. And this type of structure gives it all of these properties which allow it to be useful for reactions, for the building up of the cells, and as a metabolite too. So let's look at how water is built up chemically. So we've already said that water can contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, giving it the molecular formula of H2O. A molecular formula shows the number of atoms in their proportions. This would be the displayed formula, where we can see how each atom is interacting with other atoms. And what we can see is that the hydrogen atoms don't link together, but they each link to the oxygen, so they're connected indirectly. So this is displaying all of the bonds present in the molecule. And the bond which connects the hydrogen atoms to the oxygens are called covalent bonds. They're a type of chemical bond between atoms. So it's the bond that exists between here and here. We can see the two hydrogens up here and the oxygen. So each of these are covalent bonds. And so the molecule contains two. In a covalent bond, what happens is electrons are shared between two atoms in order to each fill their outer shell. So the goal of every atom is to fill their outer shell. For the hydrogen atom, it wants one more electron, and the oxygen atom wants to gain these as well. And in doing so, they now have two in the hydrogen shell, which helps fill that shell up. And each hydrogen has the same thing, so the hydrogens are now happy. And the oxygen has four electrons, and now it has eight because of the sharing. So now, each of the atoms are more happy because they have full outer shells. And it's the sharing, not the donation, which gives it the property of being covalent. So by definition, a covalent bond is one in which two atoms share the same pair of electrons. You'll notice the pair is shared by the oxygen and the hydrogen. And this covalent bond structure allows the water molecule to gain a property which describes it as being polar. So the electrons which do get shared in those covalent bonds are not equally shared. They're not equally spaced out. They actually lie closer to the oxygen nucleus than the hydrogen nucleus. So let's just illustrate what that means. Here we've got the two hydrogen atoms and we've got our oxygen. And here's the covalent bond. It's actually closer to the oxygen. It's a shorter distance than the distance to the hydrogen nucleus, which is much longer. 
Now, usually a lot of atoms and molecules want to even out their energy to spread it out, but in this case they're being pulled to the oxygen nucleus. The reason is because we've got negative electrons which are in this pair, they're more attracted to the positive elements of the molecule. And because the oxygen nucleus is larger, there are more positively charged protons, and so they're attracting them. So remember, the rule in chemistry is that positive always attracts negative. But if you have two of the same charges, they repel each other. So here's the oxygen nucleus, and you can see that there are eight protons. This gives it the signature of being an oxygen atom, whereas the hydrogen nucleus is much, much smaller, and it only contains one proton. And protons are positively charged. So because the protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged, those covalent bonded electrons are going to be attracted to positive things. But because there's more protons in the oxygen nucleus than the hydrogen, they're going to be pulled more towards the oxygen than the hydrogen. Hence why the covalent bond is closer to the oxygen nucleus than the hydrogen one. Because they're unequally shared across the molecule, these electrons result in the oxygen atom being polar. So we have a slightly negative oxygen atom and we have the hydrogen atoms being slightly positive. So let's just illustrate how this is working. We've got our covalent pair as before and it's being pulled to the oxygen nucleus more so than the hydrogen nucleus. Because electrons are negatively charged, this gives the oxygen atom an overall negative charge because they're sort of clustering around this area. And we've also got the oxygen's other electrons down here too. And the way we write this is that the oxygen has a delta negative next to it. So it's just showing that it has a general negative charge. For the hydrogens, the electrons are being pulled away and they're much further. So this area now has a more positive charge in relative because we've got this positive proton nucleus here and the electrons are kind of far away now. So each of the hydrogen atoms now has a delta positive region. So the molecule has a positive area and a negative area. And so we describe it as being polar. So it's this uneven distribution of charge across the molecule, making it a polar molecule. Again, just to illustrate how you would show this, the hydrogens are both delta positive, the oxygen is delta negative, a negative area at the bottom and a positive area at the top. And any molecule which is polar is a molecule that has an uneven distribution of charge. Normally molecules want to spread their charge throughout the molecule, but actually this time, because of these differences in pulls and forces, we have a negative area and a positive area. And so the molecule can kind of be drawn as an oval with a positive area and a negative area. And so it's polar. So because water has this polar property across the molecule, it can take part in something called hydrogen bonding, which is a type of bond between molecules. So we've got slightly positive hydrogen atoms in one water molecule. These can be attracted to the slightly negative oxygen atom of another water molecule. Because remember, in chemistry, we always have negative attracting positive. So remember, for every single water molecule, we have this delta positive area at the hydrogens, and we have the delta negative area at the oxygen. And because of this, we've got positives and negatives, and they're going to start attracting each other. So what we can form is a bond between positive hydrogens and negative oxygens, and this is known as a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond is the type of attraction that we see, and it's weaker than a covalent bond. So it's weaker than the bond connecting the hydrogen and oxygen inside the molecule. But it is stronger than most forces that connect molecules together. So remember, we can have certain bonds and attractions which are inside molecules, like covalent or ionic bonds. And then between molecules, we have what we call intermolecular forces, because it means between molecules. So there's lots of different types of these, and you don't need to worry about the others for now but hydrogen bond is probably the strongest of these intermolecular forces. But compared to a covalent bond, it's weak. So a hydrogen bond is a weak interaction occurring between a slightly negative charged atom and a slightly positively charged atom. So it's talking about polar molecules. Each of the individual hydrogen bonds are weak, but water forms lots of these hydrogen bonds with lots of its neighbours. So overall, it forms a nice, strong connection. And this is how water connects together as a liquid. So for example, if we were to label these, we could have a bond between this hydrogen and this oxygen. We could have one between this hydrogen and this oxygen, this one and this one. And hopefully you can get an idea that overall, all of the water molecules together form lots of bonds with each other and they form this kind of general connection. And it makes a nice network of water molecules. 
So it's the polar nature of the water molecule and the formation of these hydrogen bonds giving water all of its unique properties making it very important for life. And as it sticks together it forms liquid water and this is how it sticks together in ice as well. So it's very useful in forming for example the cytoplasm and a liquid medium where we can carry out our reactions. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.